So I don't remember when I met Mary. And she doesn't remember when she met me, which is funny because most people remember things like that about their dear friends. But I think Mary and I have spent so many lifetimes together that we just simply started on with the next thing. We became friends in the years leading up to Adie's death. I didn't know Adie very well. I, in fact, I only met him a few times. I was at his 50th and I met him at the office. Pretty soon after I met Mary, Adie started to get sick. And yeah, it was tough. There was a weekend where we were doing a leadership weekend up at Frace. Mary had invited me to participate in and Adie was meant to be running it when I got there. Adie had gone to hospital. Mary had to run the program on her own. I got to see her in action in a way that I hadn't before, which was very special. The last thing I remember about Adie is that he was having an acupuncture session with Shauna. I knew that he was in the session before me. This was after he had the operation on his mouth, so it was hard for him to talk. I remember I took him a big bunch of yellow roses. He died a couple of weeks later. I thought to myself, wouldn't it be wonderful if everyone that you have enormous love and respect for you could give a bunch of yellow roses to before they died? Mary came to me at some point in the next few months and said she wanted to write a book about the experience. She wrote a first draft and... I could see that it was a grieving process. It was a way of processing, acknowledging, and a way of loving Adie beyond his death. And there was some beautiful material in it. I encouraged her to go on with it. And it's very hard for people who haven't got any writing experience to start with a memoir. I think that's a hard thing to do. She went at it from time to time, but she wasn't really very serious about it at that point. I think she got to that point that lots of people get to with a first draft. They just don't know where to go after that and they don't know if they have it in them and maybe that was all they needed to do. And then she did go at it again. She started to get deeper into it, which was really good. And I loved having walks on the beach with her where she'd talk about the process of what she'd been working on. She'd done this research and talked to this person and all those things that happen when you write a book. And then one night, Chris and Mary and I were sitting on my balcony. We have some pretty good chats up there. And the question that came up was, what would we regret if we died tomorrow? Mary said, finish the book. I really heard her. And I thought, okay, I have to help her finish the book. So I edited it and gave it back to her. We went through it line by line, page by page, chapter by chapter. She did the work and she brought it back to me and I edited it again. She started to do those really excruciating things like seek permissions for all those other writers that feature in the book, it started to get a lovely level of polish about it. It started to feel like a real book. She kept going and she had other people look at it. She had other feedback and she really put the time in. It was an extraordinary process because it wasn't just about grief then. It was about gratitude. I think it was always about gratitude, but a different kind of gratitude. This was a gratitude for life and for the journey that people take and also a gift for all those people who are going to experience the loss of a loved one and the loss of a family member. This was Mary's way of giving back somehow to the whole world with a story that was so acutely personal. It's a vulnerable story and it's real and it's honest and it's raw and it's painful and this is a family losing a person that is intensely dear to them. I think back to the day that Chris and Mary got married and what Mary's life has been like beyond Adie's death and it's been remarkable. It's been such a celebration of who she is and who she and Chris are together and who Jack and Ella and Chris, all of them are amazing. 
extended family are together. The book is something of that too. It's something of the Dwyer clan. There's something about such an honouring of family and life and love and connection. And of course it's also deeply spiritual because that's Mary and that was 80 and that's their family. So it's rich with content for people seeking some kind of sense of connection beyond any kind of organised religion. And then Hay House agreed to publish it. And that in itself is just extraordinary too because they're an amazing company and I love what they do in the world. I have enormous respect for the people who are published by them. Then Mary had to go through all the nightmares of (laughs) the publishing process. (laughs) And I'd get these calls about, oh, my God, how do you do this? And it's hard. Not very many people get that far. Lots of people have the idea they'd like to write a book. Some people even get as far as writing a little bit. Some people might write a bit more. Some people will do a first draft, but not very many people off their own bat having never written anything before, go all the way to the finish line. And they do it well. That doesn't happen very often. So now we have the final act of grace. And it's already a gift. It's been a gift to people. I know from the feedback Mary's been getting in my own life. My uncle died recently and Mary's book and Mary sharing the process of the death of 80 helped me understand what my auntie and my uncle needed. Putting that into practice meant that everyone got what they needed, including me. It was a huge loss. And in the end, it was about as good as it could be. It was actually a spectacular death. He was a very special man. I felt that he was allowed to become really special because of the space that was created for him. And if we could all have that, to be able to die being the best we can be, it's hard to live the best we can be. But if we could all die the best we could be in that moment when everything else is gone, that's a profound gift that Mary's given us. We don't talk about death enough. We just don't talk about it and most people never get a chance to experience it firsthand until it's someone really close to them. And those slow deaths, not that 80s death felt slow, it felt fast in many ways. But nevertheless, it wasn't instant. But slow is as in, but also honouring mm. the process mm. and mm. being so present. I think the being present is really rare and that's the opportunity because everything else is gone your diary's gone after the medical appointments stop and there's just you and your body (laughs) then everything's really gone it's an opportunity for grace and that's what the story is really i think it's an invitation to understand grace in that moment when you're slipping out the door Do you know how Mary came up with the title? I think I came up with the title. (laughs) We workshopped a lot of names and I think that it was probably a combined effort in the end. It was hard. I I think grace is such an important word to have in the title and I think Mary was right into grace too and I think there there was grace in a few other titles and, yeah, I know that's the problem but we wanted it to be accessible to people. An, an invitation. It was hard to walk past Grace. Oh, the picture is fantastic, isn't it? And to think that it's a drawing of 80s, it's so beautiful, so beautiful. And the colour, I really like the colour that they've given it. It's special. It's a celebration. It's lovely. It's a coming home. The thing about book launches is that they're a real completion. It's a full circle. And I always love full circles. They happen in life all the time and we miss them if we're not careful. But it is a real full circle, I think.